The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July, July, the uh, April 18th edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 15, 15, 53 minutes, well, it could be 15, but let's make it 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. If you got a question, but you can't call in, send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The mix is coming from the semis, which are up about six tenths per cent or 17 points. The other indices trading to the downside. Dow's up 139, S&P 7 or 6. Uh, NASDAQ 103, Russell's down 8. Gold's up 14. Silver's up 23 cents. Lights we crude up 32 pennies. Natural gas up 4 cents. 30 treasury print out 130.07. Leading the charge, dollar-wise to the upside, you've got Madrigal Pharmaceuticals, 20 bucks, nearly 8%. MicroStrategy, 16 bucks, about 5%. Lockheed Martin, 14 bucks, 3%. NVIDIA, 9 bucks, 3%. Asmil Holdings, 7 bucks, 1% out there. Uh, to the downside, you've got Regenerin Pharmaceuticals. That's up 11 bucks. Uh, Avis Budget Group is down eight. That's about five percent. Humana down about eight, one and a half percent. BlackRock off seven. Molina Healthcare down six. That's a two percent move to the downside. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. But first, let's begin by taking a look at uh, well, what's going on in the market. Let's take a look at uh, market breadth. Let's look at the uh, four different time frames here that we can track. This is going to be for the ES Mini or the S&P 500 that shows up on our screen. So right now what we know is we have positive market breadth for the weekly, daily, and the 240. It's a 60-minute chart that has 141 instruments trading above profile with 188 below. So we know that on the 60-minute time frame, we'll go take a look at those charts, see if there's any kind of signals there. That's for the S&P 500. So generally bullish. If we're going to see a change in trend, it'll happen on the shorter-term time frames first out there. Let's see what's going on inside the NASDAQ 100. Inside the NASDAQ 100, this is set to bullish configuration all the way through. Weekly, daily, 240 and 60. So you've got 60 instance trading above profile, 20 instance trading below profile uh, for the NASDAQ 100. One thing I would say is that there's not going to be a top unless you get the NASDAQ to participate. And right now, from a market breast standpoint, it's saying no way. Not at least as of 11, 10 in the morning. Now, we might have some other market breadth data for the 30-minute charts out here. Let's go check on those, see what they're communicating to us. In this case here, we've got the S&P 500. This has got some bearishness to it. It's got 77 instruments trading above a 30-minute profile and 242 trading below profile out there. So, uh, so you've got some bearishness there, so we should pay attention to look at the 30-minute charts. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100 as well, see if this is in a similar setup. And it appears that it is. You've got uh, 14 instruments above, 47 below. So on the end NASDAQ, it's only the 30-minute from a market breast standpoint that says that we should pay attention. So let's do this here. Let's move over to the uh, charts, the, uh, the uh, white background charts. We'll pull up those 
instruments. These are going to be the daily time frame that show up on our screen. Let's go back. Let's let's actually take a look and dive down into the details, though, of both the ES and the NQ. So we got the NQ up on our screen. It was a 30-minute chart that showed that it had negative market breadth. So that's where we're going to start. So what's the NASDAQ doing for its 30-minute time frame? Turns out it forms a road momentum indicator top that gets confirmed at 9.30, right at 9.30. What does price do? It pulls all the way back to its breakout level of support, 13.136. 13.163.25, exactly what you would expect or anticipate if the market was bullish, that you would see a short-term time frame chart. Now we're looking at 30 minute, went to negative market breadth out there and price pulls all the way back to where it last broke out. That's the cool thing about the, uh, it's one of the cool things about the TD9 system. You've got an objective, a very objective a line to identify both breakout and breakdown areas where price is likely to make counter trend moves to. And so far, that is what's taken place. So what this tells you and I, and this is very important on either side of that trade, is 13, 163.25 is a very key level to watch on a closing basis. If price were to close below that, that will at least signal move back to the most recent low for about 12.30 in the morning on February 17th. That's down at about the 13.076 level. What is more likely to transpire now is a move higher. That move higher should take us into the bottom of that profile, close to the oscillator and change line, right around the 13.242 area. That's the message from the 30-minute time frame chart for the NQ. Remember, the other time frames out here are bullish so if we look at that 60 minute time frame just as an example what do we have out here not much i do have a wave seven top out there so we do have that uh but how that was to yeah that you know that's that's present and uh, so if the if the breakout here in the 30 minute chart fails this is going to tell us that really still gets us back into the prior lows out here which is down at the uh, 13076 area but what's important to understand about the nq let's see what else is important to understand about the nq right now Let's look at the daily time frame. So on a daily time frame, what do we know about the NQ? The NQ today made a higher high, has not taken out yesterday's low. Yesterday's low did not take out the prior day's low. The prior day's low did not take out the day before that low out there. So what we see out here is actually more of a series of higher highs than anything else inside the daily time frame for the NQ. It remains above the top of its profile, continues to run into resistance at its oscillator and change line, and needs a bearish reversal candle at day's end to then confirm a road momentum indicator top out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at the NQ. Let's switch over and go take a look at the ES Mini, see what kind of signals it's giving us for its 60 minute time frame, um, as well as the 30. We did look at the 30, that was also in a uh, TAS market breadth bearish crossover. So these charts here will populate momentarily. And as soon as they do, we'll go focus in on uh, either the 30 or the 60. I just want to see which one pops up and gives us any kind of message, if any kind of message exists at all. So on the 30-minute time frame chart, go on, calculate. Where'd you pull back to? So it actually pulled back and closed below its breakout level. So its breakout level was 41.7450. So not as strong of a chart pattern as when we took a look at the NQ. Now that sort of makes sense because didn't the ES Mini had a negative crossover for the 60 minute as well? So the ES Mini is weaker than the uh, NASDAQ out there. So what is the ES Mini on a 30 minute basis doing? It's a great question. I'd have to say what the ES Mini is planning on doing is getting back to test its recent lows. That's from about 2.30 in the afternoon on the 17th. And that's down at about the 41.48 level. We get back to this break. We'll take a look at the 60-minute chart for the ES Mini, see if that has any uh, information out there. And then we'll take a look at the GDX and the gold contract for Dano inside the Tiger's Den. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report? For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back up, folks. So we got the uh, chart for the ESMA, the 60-minute time frame on our screen out here. I, I don't have any um, really great uh, signals uh, on this. It's really the NQ that's providing the best information. So if you're trading intraday today, I'd focus in on the NQ. We know that price pulled back that support level, and you'd be one of watching its patterns for its different time frames out there. Let's go uh, get to our uh, first uh, question out here, which is, uh, well, really, John put a comment in here. He said uh, he's anticipating selling for the S&P, the other markets, going into May 5th. And so with regard to my comment for that, it would be best You've got a topping pattern inside the ES Mini, a sell the D point pattern. You've got the Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that's been triggered inside the NQ, but is waiting for a bearish reversal candle. The uh, Dow needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point pattern. And the uh, Russell just simply is consolidated with inside its uh, profile. So we won't worry about the Russell. Uh, so really, the NQ and the uh, Dow uh, it would be best if those generated um, uh, topping signals. The other thing would be the New York Stock Exchange. Let me just pull that up here. So just as far as comments there, the reason I'm going to bring up the New York Stock Exchange, I'm going to switch panels here for a moment. So we'll go back to the black background screens, and then we'll come back to these ones that are popular right now. The reason why I want to look at the New York Stock Exchange is because now that we're back here on the black screens, that's the New York Stock Exchange, uh, uh, as far as the closing basis, is up at the top portion of the screen. What's down below it in the center there is the advanced decline oscillator. Again, that's the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Whoa. Now, what we can see here, and it's a really useful piece of information, we have seen higher highs inside the New York Stock Exchange with lower highs in the advanced client oscillator. And so that's a reason, John, to be paying attention to New York Stock Exchange. Why? Because if we're, this can lead to a fairly decent decline out here. You can see the other instances where I have those on my uh, screen out there. Now, it's best if the spot volatility is below its 50-day exponential moving average in order for there to be any kind of real traction to the downside. We don't have that. We're not even close to that. 
that just yet. But now let's move over and take a look at the New York Stock Exchange chart. This is how I would put that together with regard to those comments, knowing that we also have this pattern. So now we'll just simply expand out the New York Stock Exchange. What do we see here? Well, one, we see an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That right now would look like this. We'll just simply draw this in here. So there's your A to B point or approximately. I'm just going to move this over to the uh, C point out there. And so that says that uh, we get back up to the 16300 level. Do I see any other kind of topping signal here inside the New York Stock Exchange? There is no other pattern. There's no other A to B equals CD pattern that I could draw in here. We are in bar number six. So, John, I would say this here. If we could get a topping pattern inside the New York Stock Exchange, the only one that is present right now could be a TD9 count. But that is now Tuesday. So Tuesday, so Wednesday would be bar number seven, uh, Thursday bar number eight, and Friday bar number nine. So we could get a TD nine count top between Thursday and Monday of next week. So you may be onto something. I'd watch that based upon the patterns that we just took a look at with regard to advanced client oscillator and the price moving higher inside the New York Stock Exchange. And maybe that will be the uh, key to the uh, signal that you're looking for, which is a pullback into the May 4th time frame out there. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to those comments. Last thing that I could provide to you is really the seasonals. Now that's just 10 years worth of data for the S&P. 95 years worth of data is what this looks like. And this suggests a top right around maybe around the April 22nd uh, time uh, period. So this is kind of falling into what we just looked at inside the New York Stock Exchange. And then just simply a, a swift move lower into the 29th of April and then moves higher into that May time frame out there. So that's kind of the uh, market. What I will share with you in the S&P 500, it is April, the month of April, the second most on average over 95 year period of time. It is the third most. It's the third most profitable month of the year. The first one is July. The second one is December. And just behind it is uh, April out there. So we're in a very seasonal, favorable month here, the month of uh, April. All right, so now let's go take a look at some of the, uh, so thanks for your comments out there. Hopefully the information I shared with you is helpful to you as well. Let's go take a look at the GDX and the gold contract for uh, Dano. Let's start with the uh, GDX out here. <clears throat> I did share with it the divergences, Peter. I, I just I just went over that. So you're looking, is the screen up right now still? It's not. So the divergence is right there. I'll just point this out real quickly before I move over. You've got the divergence. That's what. That's really what that whole segment was about. You've got a divergence with regard to the advanced client oscillator making lower highs while we have price making higher highs out there. And that's the risk. You've got to still wait for a top inside the New York Stock Exchange for that pattern to really mean anything. And we don't have that as we speak right now. That could come between Thursday and Monday of the next week. Now, let's get over and take a look at the GDX. What do we have inside the GDX? Well, one, we have an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, it's not confirmed on the monthly basis, but it gives you the uh, pattern. It gets us up into about the 3041 level. On a weekly basis, that same pattern exists. Now, the weekly swing point did volume of 104 million shares. It was passed with 115 million shares. So we know the monthly is not going to give us or does not appear it will give us the volume uh, for a confirmed A to B equals CD. The weekly does, and that gives us that price projection. I'll give you the exact number. I've got it on my other screen out here, I believe. The exact price projection is 3841. Now, that would be the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. It's only a 57% retracement on the weekly time frame chart and price is along the strong side meaning the c to d leg is on the right side of price this is a stronger move than the a to b leg so the weekly chart for the gdx suggests a target of 3841 however it's really headed up likely more towards 4162 the 1.272 a to b equals cd expansion level i don't have any kind of a topping pattern per se on the uh, daily time frame, just simply price jostling around, pulling back, testing areas of support, which right now is really the top of its profile, 3442. So that's what I see when I take a look at the uh, GDX. If we take a look at its daily dance steps out here, we know it's called the uh, Stevie two-step, right? It's not the Texas two-step. And what do we have? We had a two-day decline. That is your typical knee-jerk reaction time frame for moves lower out there. And so would not be surprised based upon that confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside that the GDX continues to move higher. Now, it would be helpful for gold to participate. So let's go take a look at the gold charts out here.
We take a look at the gold charts. Those will populate here momentarily. Up in the upper left-hand corner, you've got the monthly chart. Now, the monthly chart, you know, maybe it's going to go uh, test the uh, swing point from back in March of 22 up at the 2140 level. The weekly time frame, uh, it has an A to B equal CD to the upside, 2130 or so being a price target. It's the month, it's the daily time frame chart. That is the little booger right now. And that's because it formed a Roach Mintum indicator top. It did that a couple of days ago. We got that bear sash candle. So far, that has only led to a consolidation, a price movement with inside its daily profile. In order for gold to give us a signal, and I think that it may, I just don't know exactly when out here, but uh, it, right around now would be the time period for gold to start failing. However, what the U.S. dollar did was it found resistance at the top of its profile, even after having formed a bottom. So what gold would need to do to suggest that we would have a four-week decline, because that's what I'm looking at. It's just not ready to point to that at this moment out here. Gold would at least need to close below 1974.20, the bottom of its uh, daily profile. So right now you've got a top, you've got prices consolidating with inside a bullish structured profile out there. Uh, that's what we have. So I'd have to say it's still a bullish market. We take a look at the daily time frame for Goldilocks. Uh, we did have a pullback on that five hour time frame chart. Look at that, that was a Rhodes Mint indicator top, a TD nine count bottom, right at breakout support of 2,002.50. And in this case here, price can overtake that green oscillator and change line. We're looking at 2044.90 as its next move. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We're going to go flying with the seagull inside the Tiger's Den who wants to take a look at AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, which yesterday formed bar number nine of a TD9 count. So this has got a TD9 count pattern. It's going to complete today. And what price should do here is it should target a oscillator and change line. Seagull, that price point is about 95.27. That's going to get you up into this bearish structured profile area for um, Advanced Micro Devices out here. You'd love to see this close back inside his profile. And that's up at the 9108 level. We're trading below that right now. But a close above that 9108 should then be the signal that price is headed to 9527. Now, if price were to close below yesterday's low out there, and I'm not talking about today, tomorrow or 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 later, that's would negate this signal. That would need require a close below 8830 and suggest move back to 8359. The weekly time frame chart has an A to B equal C to the upside out there. It does not have a bearish reversal candle. But on a pullback, if there were to be a further further pullback, 8570 or so would be the price target. We've got a nice TD9 count on the uh, daily time frame. The monthly out here is just a consolidation with inside its uh, profiles. On a daily time frame, what has AMD been doing out here? We've seen five consecutive lower closes. Last time we saw that was back here on February 22nd, and that led to a move higher. So you've had five consecutive lower closes. You've got the daily TD9 count. And uh, for all intents and purposes, what we should see here is a rally inside of AMD. So Seagull, I hope that that helps you out and provides you with the information you were looking for. The next request is uh, from the um, is from my email. And this one is from Roger. And Roger wants me to look at Netflix and Tesla earnings today after the market and earnings tomorrow after the market. And he really wants to focus in on the 30-minute time frame chart. So let's do that first. Let's take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart for Netflix out here. Let's pull this over, see what kind of patterns, if any, we can identify here for Roger. So there certainly was an A to B equals CD pattern that was confirmed with this bullish hammer candle. So that was a buy the D point pattern. That took place at noon on the 17th. That was yesterday. So at noon yesterday, you got that bottom pattern. Now you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside, but no bearish reversal candle out here. Uh, and price is back inside this 30-minute profile. What you'd be looking for ultimately is for 329.07 to hold. That's its breakout level. But 328.67 would be another area for it to hold as well if price were to pull back further. I'd also be looking at the volume on that 30-minute hammer bar. That did volume of 344, three, call it 345,000 shares. This uh, last bar that was completed did 324,000 shares. If price pulls back, we're to pull back. Tesla rejects that high, 329.76. Do it with less than 344 or 345,000 shares. That would be a rejection of a swing point on letter volume. That would be signaling a move higher. Now, this could easily be setting up a, a the C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, but let's look at the other time frame charts here with regard to earnings, because maybe it's really not the 30-minute chart that's going to give us the clearest picture of what it may be signaling to you and I. So when we take a look at the daily time frame here, Roger, what we see is a TD9 count top. We also see that price has been dealing with a, a swing point out here from the uh, trading session of April 12th. Volume there was 3.9 million shares. Yesterday, you were moving lower with 6 million shares. So far today, you've already got uh, two and a half. So this is pulling back with volume. And if price were to close below 330.04, we should see 324.13 and maybe even 304.14. So the setup right now, you've got a top in place for Netflix, a consolidation with inside its daily profile. Volume is pushing the lowers. It pushes into swing points out there. It's signaling that it wants to move lower with 324 being one level of support, 304 being the next level. The weekly chart says, I don't know what you guys are talking about. The monthly chart is saying the same thing. It's saying that it wants to rally. So let's go with, uh, I would say, intraday. Maybe Netflix has a little push to the downside. The question is, does it hold support? You also wanted to take a look at Tesla, who's out with earnings tomorrow, I believe is what you said. So we take a look at Tesla. You also want to look at the 30-minute chart here. So we'll pull that over first, see if there's any kind of chart patterns. And all I see when I take a look at a chart here for Tesla is a sideways consolidation. So it's not really providing us with a ton as to what it might do with regard to earnings call tomorrow. If we do take a look at the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame charts, what we'll see on the daily is what? It's a great question. What do we see? It's not that. Well, I. Um, what do we see here? 
So I see a test of this swing point a few days ago, about a week ago. The swing point that I'm looking at out here is March 14th. That swing low did 143 million shares. The first time it was tested, it was with 145. The next time it was tested, it was with 129. The next time it was tested, it was with 142. So that 142 was also testing 167. So all the tests of the downside out here, Roger, with regard to that swing point, have been on lighter volume, and they've all had rejections. The problem is that Tesla is consolidating with inside its daily profile. So we really don't have a great signal here other than just that consolidation, which says watch 188.78 as resistance and 179.28 as support. On a weekly basis, a consolidation with inside of profiles. On a monthly basis, a consolidation with inside profiles, but it does have that buy the D point pattern, as does the weekly. So weekly is not bearish, monthly is not bearish, and the uh, daily not really bearish either. So I would have to go with, I don't see a clear signal inside of Tesla. Roger, if you're trying to uh, do some type of option play out here, let's see if uh, Tesla, let's try to figure out what information the uh, the uh, seasonal T, ETF, TSLQ. Oh, here we go. I don't know what Stevie was looking at. So what we have out here is 12 years worth of data for Tesla. What I can share with you is this, that the April, over the last 12 years, April has been the fourth best performing month. January is number one, followed by June, although they're really close neck and neck, followed then by August and then April. So you're in a favorable seasonal cycle out here, Roger. That's the uh, best thing that I've got for you. But with regard to the chart patterns, it's really consolidation with inside their profiles daily, weekly, and monthly. I do hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next question from the Tiger's Den, it is from ELO, and ELO wants to take a look at ticker symbol BX. So let's get over to it. And uh, pull that up on our screen. And BX is uh, trading out at about ni nice, nice gap to the upside today. It's really trading at 9072, uh, which is now what's showing on my white background screen. So sorry about that little bit of a, a data feed. It's not going to change anything because what you now have is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside, I would imagine. You've got volume at the swing point level. Well, actually, that would be right here. So the swing point at volume of 6 million shares. So far today, this has done 6 million shares. So let's just draw in the A to B equals CD. Whoops. Why did I do that? Let's hit the right key, Stevie. So A to B. And then I'm just going to move this over here. Let's move this line over. I'm going to try to move it over. One more time. There we go. All right. So this is completing the one-to-one -one move of the A to B equals CD. You have both a competing... You potentially have a competing rising window. That's bullish. And this is currently showing a shooting star. But it's not a shooting star when I take a look at my other chart. So you've got a gap to the upside. This would suggest to me that this will do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. You've got resistance at the center of its bearish structured weekly profile. So here's the little booger. Now you've got resistance between 92.94 and 99.01 when we take a look at Blackstone out there. So they're coming out with earnings. Um, watch today's candle. But here's the thing. Even if you did end up with a with a uh, bear shooting star, you still have to account for that gap. And there's no way that that would be if that gap. If I colored it in with from a candle formation, there's no way that would be a bear shooting star. So it always makes it a little bit more complicated out here. You've got a um, boy, just nothing else that I see out here, ELO, when it comes to Blackstone. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So the uh, only request we have inside the uh, is coming from the Tiger Den. It's from Dan inside the Tiger Den, and Dan wants to take a look at ticker symbol GFAI. That is Guard Force AI trading out right now. Dan at about twenty two fifty five. The level you want to watch today, I believe, is twenty two seventy two. Now you're looking at my white background screens. Um, it does not. Again, there's a little bit of a delay here with regard to its data feed. Price is actually trading at twenty two fifty five. So the top of the profile, top of the daily profile, again is twenty two. 272. If price closes below that, it's been tested for the last couple of days, that would then signal to me that price is likely to pull back to support. Now, there's going to be three levels of support on a further pullback, and we're only suggesting that is a likely outcome with a close below uh, the 2272 level. That first one would be about 1957, Dan. That's the oscillator and change line. Below that, you have a bullish structured profile, and that's between the range of 1422 and 1706. So that's your support levels should we see a close below the top of that profile. As I look to the other time frames, the weekly chart has a nice Rosman to indicator bottom, and there the level that you're looking at as resistance is the top of its profile. And the top of its profile is 2360. So to the upside, did really love to see a close this week above 2360. Last week, the close was 2334. So you really got to get a close above that 2360 level to suggest that there is some kind of change in trend, some type of breakout that is unfolding out here. On the intraday charts, for example, which one has a top? The 65 minute, the 130 minute charts, they both have tops out there. One's a TD9, one's a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Both have found support. So that's a positive at the bottom of those uh, currently current and active profiles out there. So you know what level to watch? Uh, you know that a price closed below the top of that profile. Now, volume today is about 396,000 shares so far. Uh, that swing point that we're looking at was 2.3 million shares out there. Nonetheless, it closed below. Uh, the uh, top of that profile opens up at least the test of that oscillator and change line. So, Dan, I hope that that helps you out. I don't see anything on a 30-minute chart or anything worth really taking a look at out there that would provide you with additional information. So, thank you much for the request. I don't have any other request at the moment, and you are most welcome out there. So, let's do this. Let's. Um, it's going to take a moment here for the charts to populate, but since it's the NDX that is the uh, one that is 
I'd have to say truly holding the markets up. Let's go take a look at the NDX 100 charts out here. Now, I've got them. I just need to find the right tab. Trading, NDX charts. That seems like the right tab to Stevie. This is going to take just a moment here to populate. And then what we're going to do is actually change screens and go over to the top holdings with inside the NDX 100. So let's get that going, Apple being the number one. So we're going to look for here, are any kind of signals, are they at top? Um, or any other signals that we might find out here. So let's start with Apple. As we take a look at Apple, let's open up the uh, chart. And I see the other ones are still populating. Just give this a minute here. Sorry about that. As we take a look at Apple, what do we, whoops, let's try that again. Just Stevie acting too quickly. So we take a look at Apple out here. Apple will negate a Rosemont indicator top with a close today above 166.84. Well, 166.13 or, or close to that APL. Let me see where it's trading. 160, 165.80. 165.80, which is above the top of his profile. So let me give you a couple of numbers here. For those of you that trade Apple, you're just going to use Apple as a monitor for what's going on inside the markets. Apple is trading above the top of his profile. So that number is 165.75. So put that down on your pad of paper. If uh, Apple remains above that, its overall signal is neutral to bullish. If price closes below that level, well, then we could see just simply a, a price back to support, which would be between the 160.32 and 161.41 level. Now, volume-wise, price is pushing to that swing point from April the 4th. That had volume of 46 million shares. In two hours of trading, we've done 21 million shares. Price is pushing into that swing point with volume or certainly at 1146 it appears to be with volume. And so that says that price should be back up, even if it closes below 166.84 today, it should be back up to test that swing point, anywhere between 165.11 and 166.84 out there. So we do have a top in place, it could get negated and price is pushing into that swing point that formed that top with volume. It just says, okay, be careful with regard to Apple. In the case of Microsoft, Microsoft had a TD9 count top, a TD9 count top that just simply led to a sideways consolidation. Um, that consolidation will continue if price continues to close below the top of its profile, which is 288.61. But a close day above 288.61 for Microsoft, well, that would then put this in a neutral position. And if the price were to close above, 290.208, it gets back to a bullish condition. So top here, but what price is done, it's just holding support and trading with inside a support zone. In the case of Amazon, no top in place out here. In the case of NVIDIA, NVIDIA has a Rogemintum indicator top. That top would get negated with a close above 280 even Steven. You're at 278.90. You're trading above the top of its profile. It's not exactly a bearish setup, even though it's got a top. It's more neutral than it is bearish. Googly one. Google, yesterday, with its gap to the downside, formed a Rogemintum indicator top. But like the other ones, it is just consolidating with inside of its profiles. No levels of support have broken. Tesla, we already covered. Meta, Facebook out here. What do we have for Facebook? It's trading out, and let's pull this back, it'll be easier to see. What Facebook needs is a bearish reversal candidate to confirm a Rogeman to Medicator top. Now, it's lost its momentum a bit, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to continue to move higher out here. So we don't have a top when it comes to uh, Facebook. A bearish reversal candidate would go ahead and form a Rogeman to Medicator top. And then finally, let's finish it off. I'm not sure if... Uh, if uh, uh, Broadcom is, in fact, the eighth weighted instrument, sometimes it's switching between that and Pepsi or Costco or Cisco. But either way, it is one of the top weighted stocks inside the NDX 100. We take a look at the chart here for Broadcom. What we see is a Rosemont indicator top, the price basically consolidating in a sideways range. Price has gotten back to where price had broken out from. To a certain extent, this gapped up on March 3rd with 4.6 million shares and pulling back is pulled back with 1 million, 1.5, 1.5, 1.4, 1.3. It doesn't exactly suggest that it's got the bottom to push things lower out there, even though it's got that top. So we do see, just to summarize, what do we see here for the top eight or approximately the top eight holdings with inside of the uh, 
NDX 100, we most certainly see tops that are in place out here. They have been taken out. If they do, obviously those get negated and tell us we move higher out here. But what we haven't seen is much in the way of selling. The retracements have been pretty uh, thin, pretty narrow at this stage for those instruments out there. But I still say keep an eye on the NQ. So right now we've got the uh, Dow down 101, 93 actually. The S&P's off six. NASDAQ 100's down 15. That's one tenth percent of the downside. Russell's off 11. That's a big mover to the downside. That's off six tenths of a percent. And you've got the semis up eight points, straight out at 3074. Gold is up 1450. Silver's up 22 cents. Light speed crude is up 48 pennies. Natural gas up seven cents. And the 30 year treasury printed out at 129.31. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So uh, we will probably leave the show where we began, which was take a look at the NQ out here. So those are the charts that you've got up on our screen uh, as we speak right now. The 30-minute time frame for the NQ is still in a bearish crossover mode. There are 11 instruments for a 30-minute chart trade above profile. 
47 below profile out there and prices testing its breakout level of 13163 now the 60 minute time frame still remains bullish and when i say remains bullish there are 60 minutes 60 instruments trading above profile 22 below so it seems to me like what we have is a choppy market 30 minute again coming back and testing that support level 13163.25 you want to watch that today like a hawk that may be signaling something to us if price breaks through that now the reason that i say that and the reason that john inside the tiger's den was just simply started off with the comment of looking for a pullback I would have to say is more so because of this chart. This chart here is the Dow Cash Index. And what I've drawn in here are two different uh, channel lines. We've got a rising price channel. Those are the blue diagonal lines. And we have a descending price channel. And what price did last week, what it's done this week, which it has done several times, it's made its way up to that descending price channel line. If price closes above that, and by closing above that, that would mean, well, let me get a data box out here. That would say that would mean a close above last week's high, which is 34.082.94. If we get that, then we likely have a change in trend signal. Now, the other resistance level that the uh, uh, Dow hit is the horizontal trading ranges. So those are the green ones up at the 34.152 level. Uh, what price actually got up to as a high last week was, uh, what did I say, was uh, 34082 versus 34152. So you can also see that we've got a consolidation inside of the Dow, the cash indice that is, that's running between 31530 and the 34152 area and price run into resistance at a descending price channel. And if that, in fact, holds, well, we could see at least a further move lower with 31.530 being another price target to the uh, downside. So I'll leave it with the best that I can. And uh, hopefully that works for you. But stay tuned. We've got great programming lined up. I'll be back with you tomorrow on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday and be safe out there. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow.